Hello and welcome to Best Sips Worldwide. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, an American travel writer living in London. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by the history of cocktails ever since. Through the years, I've been lucky enough to sip some of the best made by the best. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let me introduce you to the movers and shakers of the world's most famous watering holes. James Gilray may not be as well known as his fellow 18th century cartoonist Hogarth, but does William have one of the great gin bars in London bearing his name? I think not. The spirit known as Mother's Ruin is going through a renaissance, and Sam Mitchell, who helms Gilray's Bar at the London Marriott Hotel County Hall, joins us today on the show to explain it all. I've been bartending for about 10 years. Uh, my first bar job was on New Year's Eve, cleaning ashtrays, and uh, I thought it was really fun. Uh, I got picked up and danced around on New Year's Eve as a, the guy cleaning all the ashtrays, so I thought that was, it was really cool to be like the guy who was getting paid to party. So uh, that's, that's how most bartenders do. Um, then I started working in a bar, a cocktail bar above it, above the pub, uh, that was had very uh, questionable bartenders. And, uh, Where was this? What town? This was in Greenwich. So I'm a Londoner. Uh-huh. I was born in Westminster, but I grew up in South East London. Okay. But um, I worked in a bar, and uh, it was run by a bunch of... Uh, where are they from? Um, oh, Albanians. And they were, they're very hard-working guys, and they really, uh, they're tricky guys. We had a three-day training on uh, cocktails, and uh, you had to wake up in the mor- in, wake up for midday to be there, six hours of training, and then six hours of partying, and then do that three times and uh, that was pretty hardcore. Um, then after that, I worked in nightclubs for a long time, for about four years. Um, it was really fun, I enjoyed it, but then I really wanted to hone my skills in hospitality, and I thought, where is the, the place for, to be the best bartender and work in the best places with the best guests? Um, and that was my hotels. So I started working for Marriott about five and a half years ago at the Marriott Hotel uh, West India Quay. Uh, I helped them, we, we opened a bar called the Manhattan Bar, and then after that we changed our concept to a G&T lounge, which then has ju- made me become addicted to gin, like, a, like an 18th century uh, hustler, um, which is fantastic. I, I love gin, I think it's, um, it's, so, it's so cool that it's, it's become this kind of craze that we're kind of seeing. You know, what were the guys at Sipsmith did in 2000 when they changed the law? And all that. It's so cool. I really think it's it really fun. It definitely is the time for gin. I yeah. mean, there's so many new gin makers now. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, and, and so that love of gin, were you called here to come, come yes. here? So because we, they were, wanted to do the same thing? We did, we did West India Key, and uh, I always had my eyes here because uh, I'm, I was born in Westminster, and I always thought it would be a really an honor to run the bar here and to be the head bartender here, and basically a place where I was born which is um, really, really fantastic. Um, so uh, when the, they didn't really have a steady head bartender for a couple of, mu- couple of years, and I thought, I, I was moving over here anyway with my girlfriend, and I thought, let's, um, let's do it. And uh, I asked them, and they said, yeah, we want you. So I went over there, and I've been here now for about a year and five months, coming up to six months. Uh, we've had some really good times. We've made some, we want our second menu now. This is our, our second second try of a really good menu, and I think this is one of the best menus that the team have done. Taken this. So when you got here, how did you see that this bar was, and what um, changes did you want to make, or what direction did you want for it? This, this bar, when I first came, the, I ordered a car. I remember they said to me, um, Sam, what um, we want to make this a destination bar. Um, that was the MO. It was basically to say, to make this a bar that people want to come to drink, and like American bar, across the road and like the artesian over in Langham you know to make it a bar that's known for dr- for for good quality drinks and also amazing service which i think sometimes people don't tap on but i think the service is something that's really always has to be focused on well that's a lot of pressure too yeah. to say this is you know your yeah you, you know you to make this a destination bar that's, that's pressure. It, it, it's i think it's funny I, mean, I think if you have a robust cocktail menu like we have with knowledgeable bartenders, which we have, with a great location, which we have. I think the the rest is just uh, is just you've got to you've got to work hard and be here all the time and have a lot of fun with it. 
I think you've got to make your your guests happy and your <clears throat> your staff happy as well. So we have have the mix to make it a great bar, and it is. I've never had a person complain about about this bar. Fabulous. So it's I, hand on heart, I can say that. May, now, was the menu the same as it is now? Why don't you talk us no, through the menu? Um, so you we, said there have been two changes. So I think the people we, would love to hear what it was like before and how no, so, you your steps to recreate well, it. Well, it's interesting because I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about cocktail trends away and well, my perception of where cocktails are going and to where maybe other people's are. We launched our first, when I first arrived, we had a very gastronomic kind of menu, which was, you know, all fancy cocktails. It took ages to make, and I said, you know, this is not working because you have to have that harmony of service and quality. A cocktail needs to be quick, but it also needs to be good. So I straight away changed the menu, made it quite, not necessarily simpler, simpler but less complicated than what we had before. With The other one had like 17 different ingredients. It was, it was, it was a fantastic menu, but not for, not for the speed. You know, if you're waiting 20 minutes for a drink, you're gonna say, what's going on here? Um, so I wanted a really nice, punchy menu uh, so we made it all gin we did 20 different gin cocktails which was fantastic it went down really well and it made us it, it cemented us as a gin bar and that's what we really kind of praise on we always make sure we have a good gin selection uh, we used to have 150 I've reduced it to 40 now and I rotate it every three months to make to have a variety of different gins right now I'm looking into barrel age barrel aged gins uh, I think there's some really nice ones coming out uh, Cotswold Distillery, the 1616 gin, which is just released, is amazing. Uh, you've got some other Zuidam Three Year as well, which is an amazing barrel aged gin. It's just, um, it's, for me, whenever some whiskey drinkers come in, they say, "Oh, I want to try a whiskey." I say, "No, no, have this one. It's not a it's, And then I say, oh, "You're drinking gin." <laughs> it works every time. Um, so yeah, we did that menu, and it worked really well. Um, then. We got a whole uh, a couple of new guys in, and we, we sat down. We said, "We want to make a new menu." Uh, so we took a couple of threads, and I said, "Okay, we need to mention James Gilroy. I think we need to mention James Gilroy. We need to mention cocktails. We need to mention gin. Those are the three things that we need to look at. Who was James Gilroy? He was an 18th century caricaturist. He was around when the gin craze was happening, which is awesome. Uh, so he was he was a guy drinking gin. He actually jumped out of a window in St James's Park, uh, on St James's Park Street, wherever it is, uh, and." Uh, he uh, came blind from drinking so much absinthe. He's, oh, no he's a, he's a, he was a real rebel. And I, I, you know, when it came down to service and cocktails, stuff like that, we didn't want to kind of be so snooty and kind of, we only make this and this and this. We wanted to be like James Gilway, a rebel, a creative person, and, you know, relate to his drawings at the same time. And that's where our cocktails do. They are, you know, they're not the most conventional five-star hotel cocktails you're going to find. They are a bit crazy. You know, there is smoke in your face. Maybe you don't want smoke, but there is there. You know, it is quite an interesting cocktail cocktail menu. It's not not too... Uh, well, you know. I think in this day and age, people, especially people who come to London, who come to bars, are quite a sophisticated audience. Exactly. And yet you have the people who are the... You know, I only want a martini, I only want it this way, I only want my Manhattan, I only want it this way, the old fashioned. But, you know, I think the majority really are like, show me something. Yeah. You know, show me something new, I want to try something new, I'm here to try something new. I don't think that's the, the gin craze would take off as much if there weren't as many people wanting to try all different kinds of new things. Exactly, I mean... Uh, and what a wonderful time to be a bartender. I think it's one of the best. I think uh, right now, uh, to be a bartender is probably one of the best jobs. You have so much creative individuals in this city. It's really, it's an honor. It's and they seem to, as we were saying before, to, to support each other. Everyone, I mean, I, I know that, you know, there's several individuals I've always confided in and asked them how they did. Even comes down to the simplest things of waking up in the morning after a long shift. People help you and they, you know, they send you things, their regime, they say they wake up and they go to the gym. You know, it's really a, quite a tight-knit community, especially in London. Um, I think it's re we're really lucky to work in such an amazing city with some, some really talented individuals. Um, back to the gym, though. Yeah, yeah. The 40 gyms. Are they from, where are they from around the, are they from the, around the world? Are they um, British? Um, or? I try and get as many British gins as possible because huh. obviously being a British gin bar, you've got to kind of have that. Um, there are some really good American gins. There are some really good Spanish gins. There's some good Dutch gins as well, you know, the, or Geneva's, right. whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, I say I pick it on quality and story. I think I get probably one or two gin reps a, a week coming and saying, try this gin, try this gin. What's the story? What, what's this? Oh, it's got this botanical, not this botanical. Okay. 
that means nothing to me. What well, it should be, it should relate to what the product is. Is it a better product than what I'm currently pouring? And also, what li- you know, what lies down? What's the basis of your, your doing it? A lot of people now are just kind of going to a to big distilleries and asking them to make a three thousand, thirty thousand, hundred thousand bottles of this gin with the recipe that they want, and then they sell it. That's it, and that, they just jump on the bandwagon. But then you've got other distilleries like Warner Edwards, uh, again Cotswolds, and you know, people, those guys who are really they have their own distilleries, Silent Pool, and they're making their own gin and they're producing it. And I think that's that's where we need to kind of focus on. So if you have that, we take you seriously. I think that is that why you decided to cut down the amount of yes. Gins I, had a, I had I had a few gins. That I said, oh, you know what? It's just it's just jumping on the wagon. Which is okay. It's it's fair enough. I mean, maybe some people might find me too critical about that, but that's just my view and my opinion. I think that you need to have a kind of a much more of a, a deeper rooting, especially in the industry as well. And as well, you need to provide jobs for distillers as well. I mean, we we always sit there and talk about bartenders. We also think about the guys that are making the stuff as well. Of course, that's a recipe in itself, and we've got to respect that. And I think uh, with these gin tastings as well, and these these gin craze, people are respecting that more. I think the consumers are becoming more educated, which is fantastic. I mean, uh, here in Gilroy's, we uh, we do a very a very chilled out kind of gin tasting. Someone says a gin and tonic, we don't say, okay, no problem. What one do you want? We say, which one would you feel for? And then we we bring out three or four gins, and we kind of we, we create an experience for you. It's not a case of just going, oh, I recommend this one because it's got this and this and this. Obviously, within reason. If it's crazy busy. I can't do it. <laughs> but you know, that, that's that's where we we try and educate. Not in a snooty way, saying, oh, try gin. It's more if they want to try gin, we try and educate them for that. That's fantastic. Now, you were talking about your second menu. Yeah. You said that there were a few things that went into it, and one of them was... One of them was the, the, the artist, pictures. The pictures. The pictures. The pictures. So the pictures and the names. So the names, right? I always always get questions in, in, in the, the bar about all of the crazy names, very slippery weather, the viewing from the hustling in Covent Garden, Pandora opening her box, you know, if I go down, if I go down the menu and kind of tell you what ones are related to what, uh, regarding moi means look at me in French. Uh, so that cocktail is smoked. So when it's poured, there's a lot of smoke everywhere, and it kind of gives a, a lot of drama. So that is related to the name of the picture and the na- and the style of the cocktail. Uncorking old sherry is a picture of a gentleman taking a huge bo- uh, uh, bottles of sherry with uh, severed heads, supposed to be politicians' heads, I think. Um, uh, and I wanted to recreate that, so I've got a couple of those styled bottles behind there, and that's why I store the batched cocktail in. Um, a fashionable contrast. Um, I found that apparel spritz was really popular, um, and I wanted to have a contrast on that. So I wanted to put some lavender and some gin in there. So I made a fashionable contrast of a fashionable con- a cocktail, which again is another pi- name of a picture. Uh, a modern antique. So um, we have a one cocktail that uh, Kevin did which is fantastic which was um, this uses Patron uh, caramel uh, infused with spicy chili peppers uh, pineapple juice and Cointreau so it's basically it it I'm a tequila divine. drinker too uh, okay. <laughs> so um, that's you know it's it, it's an antique which is a margarita but it's also modernized as well and so, Kevin is one of your, your one fellow of, bartenders one is, Kevin is one of the bartenders uh-huh. who, who works with us um as well, Pandora opening her box. Uh, that is used bathtub gin, and uh, we wanted to use something with robust tea. Um, and what is bathtub gin? Bathtub gin is a. It's a, it's not gin made in a bathtub. So oh, yeah. Lee White hold me to this because I'm not 100 percent sure if it is, but uh, sorry, Lee. We thought we wanted to do something in a box, so we got these Chinese takeaway boxes, and uh, we got the paper that the bottles wrapped in. And we wrap it up and we make a little parcel. And uh, then we shake it with robust tea, uh, Ojet, Le- uh, Luxardo, King's Ginger, and white peach puree with gin infused with robust. It's lovely. It's uh, just a really refreshing drink, but the guest doesn't know what's going on because they've got this little parcel and you just kind of stab it like a milk carton and you drink out of it. So it's pretty fun. Um, where else? What else have we got here? Uh, light Expelling Darkness. Um, so Light Expelling Darkness uh, was a cocktail that... Um, when uh, me and Kevin, we sat down and uh, we looked at the photo, uh, the idea is, is it's the light expelling darkness. So um, we got this, we said, we agreed that the glass needed to be 
be dark like a tiki mug. So we found a nice tiki mug and we wanted it to relate to some, some kind of like sun god or something like that. So what we do is we get uh, spicy rum, um, Cointreau and raspberries and we uh, flambe it uh, with cinnamon. Oh my god, they sound divine. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> we flambe it with cinnamon and we pre-shake and pineapple juice which is already in there and we, f we pour this sugar Quantro rum and raspberries have been set on fire for a couple of minutes in there and there's all these fire and flames coming up but it's expelling so it's the light expelling the darkness uh -huh. so that was the kind of idea of the cocktail to relate to the name relate to the picture and then relate to the theater of the drink what we're going to do is we're going to be running this menu for about a year with maybe a couple of tweaks um, the next menu I've already got a concept for I'm not going to tell anything else <laughs> it's it's our it's uh, even more wilder. Um, I'm calling it, the concept is quite simple. It's called the three point system. That's all I'm going to say. It's, that is literally it. When you press stop record, I might tell you. <laughs> all right. Well, the next time we sit down and chat, it will be for that three point menu. Yeah, that's, and uh, so I look forward to speaking to you then. Cool. All nice right. One. Thanks so much. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks to Sam for introducing me to Gilray the Artist and Gilray's The Bar. If you want to see examples of the cartoon Sam bases his menu on, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Next week, and the last before Best Sips takes a summer holiday, are the tag team of bar manager Daniel Thompson and bartender Carlo Lorenzon over at Two Ruba at Hilton London Tower Bridge. Until next time, bottoms up! For more information and links to everything you've heard about, plus a bit more, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Thanks for listening to Best Sips Worldwide, a spin-off of Best Bits Worldwide. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation, and never drink and drive. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. You'll find me at the bar. The bar.